Hello friends, my name is Christian Ray Flores. Welcome to Headspace where we explore transformative ideas and transformative practices. Today I want to talk about following your passion and why I think that's bad advice and why a better advice would be find your calling and get paid while doing it. This is good stuff. Equally important for a 20 year old starting your career and a CEO trying to fully manifest uh, their potential. Uh, I'm going to explore four different ways of finding your calling and one key factor that can make you or break you in the process. But before I do, click on subscribe, click on the bell, share the post. Welcome to Headspace. So why is following your passion, following your bliss bad advice? It's not bad advice, it's flawed advice, incomplete advice, which if you think about it deeply enough, is bad advice. I'll explain why. I'm a Christian, most timeless wisdom comes from scripture, so I'll use scripture. You don't have to believe in it, but when you hear it, I think it might impact the way you think. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 it says this, and I want to, pay, I want to pace you through the scripture so that you can pay attention. For we are God's handiwork, you and I are a masterpiece. We're designed by a designer, by a creator. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works. So we, cre we are created with the purpose of doing good work of all kinds, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We're given an assignment. We're, giving, we're given the appropriate resources, the appropriate talents, the appropriate context, the appropriate provision to do this good work. Now that's really, really powerful stuff. Now, let me contrast following your passion, following your bliss with finding your calling. When you follow your passion and your bliss, you're focusing on who you are. When you follow your calling, you focus on whose you are. When you follow your bliss, you're focusing on what you want to do. When you follow your calling, you're focusing on the things that are prepared for you to do. When you're fol following your bliss, you're serving yourself. When you follow a calling, you are serving others. And that's really the main goal of all the talents, of your capabilities, is to serve as many people as you can. That is a completely different path. It's not a nuance, it's not a small thing, it's a completely different path for living life, especially for living life professionally, right? Why did I include getting paid in the process in the title of this video? Because money is one of the foundational ways we expressed value to each other for good works between human beings. I will illustrate. Many years ago, I was sort of shifting careers yet another time. Uh, here in the US, I was working as an executive in a larger uh, charity, and I was overseeing a multi-million dollar project in the US and overseeing nine different countries in Latin America uh, with charity work. So that was my work, nothing to do with media. And then I just looked around and I realized that this organization was doing amazing work all over the world and they were just not using video and, and also they were not using video effectively because they wanted to reach out to the youth and it was sort of this, even the video that they used was a bit boring, really not youthful, right? So I used some experience that I had creating music videos in the past as a director, but I lacked some pieces. I didn't know how to, how to edit, for example, at the time. So what I did, I was like, you know, this is a need. I think we need to serve people better and I'm not getting paid to do this, but I'm gonna learn how to edit. I know how to shoot a little bit. I know the concept, I've done this in some ways before. So I paid somebody to teach me video editing from the ground up and I learned in my free time. Then I grabbed the camera, I did some, uh, some shoots, I put it all together in this sort of very fun, youthful music video that is a promotional video for this charity and some of the work that they were doing, amazing work brought this video to the CEO and I said, uh, Pat, her name's Pat, watch this. So I showed her the video. She just was blown away. She literally got up, brought everybody in the office from the full floor into her office and, say, and showed the video to them. Everybody was really excited. After they left, she sat me down and I said, and she said, Christian, I'll pay you $5,000 for each video you make. Can you make more of those? 
this is just an illustration of you use what you are equipped to have. You sort of strive for the things that you're lacking, right? You believe that you're there to serve people and you put all these things together and then you do it and somebody eventually will say, how much can I pay you? Cause I want more of this. That is a powerful, powerful principle. I hope you pay attention to this. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe four different dimensions on how to find your calling. Um, and also one factor that can make you or break you in the process. Ready? Four things, natural, experiential, professional, spiritual. I'll say it again, natural, experiential, professional, spiritual. These are the dimensions that you want to look into when you look for calling. I'll just break it down one by one. Natural. What are your natural inclinations? What are the things that you remember going, wow, I lose track of time when I'm doing this. You know, for me, it was music recording, that sort of thing. I also liked the learning. That was sort of one of those things that I just entered a wormhole in when a, with a book, for example, and I just would emerge hours later with, you know, I didn't even notice that it was, it's been two and a half hours, for example. Um, communication with one, was one of those things. I really liked seeing how people build stories, you know? So I read a lot of biographies of creative types early on in, in, in life. I had no explanation why I was interested in that, but I was interested in that, right? I was interested in the process of how things are built. So these are all pointers to design. And I think that's probably why, um, so that's where the follow your passion, follow your, follow your bliss comes from is like mind for what you were designed to do that way. But it's incomplete, it's just one quadrant of this whole multidimensional thing. Number two, experiential. What are some experiences that are completely not related to your professional life that actually may contain in them a calling, an, an equipping, a, a design, a, um, a pre predestined um, ability to do something better than others? And that's experiential and people don't pay enough attention to that. So for example, who did you hang out with? What did your grandpa teach you? Um, where, where did you go? What did you learn? So for example, I, I went because of some dramatic actually things. I moved to three different continents by age of nine that shaped the way I am. Right? So it gave me some multicultural abilities. A quick learners sort of ability. I really love culture. Like I can, I, if I'm around people, I can soak in, I become a sponge. I want to learn how they are. Uh, and these things come from experiences. It doesn't come from education. It's not a hard skill. These are just experiences. And I have many of those things, right? Here's the third dimension, professional. These are hard skills. These are the things that most people pay attention to in, in when they, sort of called professional development or career, that kind of thing. Okay, what are you trained to do? What do you know what to do? What are the hard skills? What did you go to college? What did you study? What did you get any certifications, any additional trainings, other things like that? These are hard skills. You can point to the time and place where you didn't know how to do something and then you learned how to do something. Now you can know how to do this one thing. So for me, one of them was video editing, right? It was not formal, but I actually paid somebody to teach me how to do it. And I practiced it over and over and over again until somebody said, how much? I want you to do this more. And, and by the way, um, since then, three years later, I had a production video production company and I had a, a, a first project that was $150,000 for one project that was done in five days. So you, f you follow this thread, you know, and it becomes a calling, right? It becomes something different. Um, I created a short film that made it into a bunch of festivals. I can put, put a link to that and the company that I have now, which is also a digital marketing uh, company in the subject line, in the subject notes. But what I'm telling you is that you follow your calling and it brings you to some exceptional uh, outcomes in, in career and ways to serve, right? And a lot of that stuff, by the way, along the way, I got paid well, but I also donated and served through those skills in all kinds of different ways. I did all kinds of things for free, pro bono, that sort of thing. We still do them. Um, okay, so that's professional, right? Um, I went to school and I have a master's degree in economics. That's a hard skill. That actually informed a lot of the things that I did downstream. 
um, that's a hard skill. You pay attention to that. How do you use that and why you're not using that? Because many people who go to college for one thing don't use them, don't use that skill in down, downstream. Now, sometimes it's okay. Sometimes you go, maybe I should use it, right? Um, okay, and the fourth one is spiritual. Now, this is the stuff that you almost never hear in, in work, professional development, career. And once again, I think of it as an essential, fundamental, powerful part of life because you spend literally eight hours a day, the most creative time every day you spend working. Most of us do. And if you don't incorporate that into your, into your spiritual realm, uh, it's sort of an, it, it's a problem. You start living this sort of disassociated double life and I think that's not healthy. So the spiritual dimension is really, really important. And once again, it's coming back to those questions, not who you are, but whose you are. What values can you extract from your spiritual walk, from your spiritual uh, world and implement and serve and pour into your professional life? What is your mission? How does your work life express mission and meaning and service and, and changing the world, right? Purpose is absolutely essential to finding a calling. Now, why do I mention those four dimensions and how does that shape the way you are? Okay, I'll give you sort of a very quick analysis of this and I think you can make sense of it and play around with it after you watch this video. If you have, of, of those four things, natural, experiential, professional, spiritual, of those four things, if you have two out of four, you can get a job. Think about it. If you have two out of four of this thing, you can get a job. If you have three out of four, you can get a career. You can have a career that lasts for a long time. It's fairly successful. If you have four out of four, then I think you have a high chance of finding a calling and hitting a, a place in life where you can be fully integrated, serve to the best of your abilities, really reach your potential and be blissfully happy in the process and paid in the process, right? The fifth element, which can make you or break you in the process of finding your calling and serving people and impacting this world in a, in a positive way is how you process suffering. Suffering can paralyze you in all of the giftedness, all of who do you belong to, whose you are, your masterpiece, um, you're created to do good works, to serve as many people as possible. All those things are shrunk and limited because you're paralyzed by suffering from the past that you haven't, that, that you haven't processed well. Or suffering can mobilize you, can unleash you, can equip you to do that better and more. And the difference between those two states of being is absolutely impossible to overstate. So if you have a sense that your suffering in the past is still shaping your future, please, please, please hear me on this. Deal with it. Get counseling, go to church, get discipleship. There's a great program called Grief Recovery that I benefited from tremendously uh, in processing my suffering. I'll put a, a link in the show notes as well. But whatever it takes, deal with the suffering if it's shaping, if your past is shaping your future in the wrong way, you have to identify it and you have to find the courage to do it. So going back to the beginning of this conversation, why is following your passion bad advice? Because it's an incomplete advice. Because it's not about finding a passion, but it's about fi finding your calling. And why is that important? It's because if you find your calling, you get the full complete picture of who you are. That you are a masterpiece in the present moment. That you are pre-designed, given a task to do special, unique, wonderful work, good work for others. And all you have to do is find what that, those pieces are and put them together and then go forward and serve as many as possible and change lives and bless people. And as you get good at it, as you find your place in your calling, inevitably you're gonna get paid for it because you can only be you and only you can do the work that's designed for you to do and people will pay for it gladly because that's how we express value for each other and they would want you to do it over and over and over again for more people. Thank you for watching Headspace. This episode is brought to you by the Ukraine Relief Network. So if you want to contribute to our work with the refugees in Ukraine, please go to the website uh, and the URL that I have on the screen and join the effort, amplify the network. 
please hit subscribe, share with others. Thank you for watching Headspace.